डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ अवर फर्स्ट ब्लॉक एंड फर्स्ट यूनिट ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग ब्लॉक वन इज इंट्रोडक्शन एंड यूनिट वन नेम इज इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग सो ऑन योर स्क्रीन यू कैन सी अवर एजेंडा ऑफ द यूनिट लाइक लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिवस देन वी विल गो फॉर इंट्रोडक्शन then we will see a role of software then types of software then we will see software engineering a te layered technology then we will also see a process framework and and then we will see our uh, embryo activities then a capability maturity model integration cmmi then let's start with uh, learning objectives so the objective of the chapter is to introduce concept of software engineering and related terms when you will learn this chapter then you will be able to understand what is software and types of software then you will get insight of software engineering then actually process related to framework and umbrella activities and also you will gain knowledge about capability maturity model so let's start with introduction actually computer software is the product that software engineer build it encompasses programs database and documents now a days computer software is included in majority of the products right so it has become pervasive in commerce culture and our everyday activities so a textbook definition of software can be software is set of instructions or programs that when executed provide a desired feature function and performance or we can say data structure that allows program to adequately manipulate information and also we can say documents that describes operations and use of programs now we will see role of software so software serves dual roles it is a product as well as a means to produce a new product as a product it allows users uh, to utilize computing potential of computer hardware so as a product software transforms information uh, through various processes so it acquires information from various input sources uh, actually it manages information by performing processes on it such as sorting it uh, produces information as a result of processes then it modifies information to the needs of users so it formats information for display and uh, actually it transmits information through network also so this information can be a simple one bit of data or can be a complex uh, like multimedia presentation so as a vehicle to deliver product software controls hardware uh, then it controls communication of information over network and also it allows creating and controlling other programs actually software delivers most important product of time the information actually it transform personal data manage uh, business information to enhance uh, competitiveness so it provides gateway to worldwide information networks so role of computer software has changed tremendously over span of more than 60 years so we have seen tremendous improvement in hardware performance and its computing architecture over the years size of its memory and storage devices has improved drastically it offers variety of information and output devices this all has resulted in a more sophisticated and complex computer based system but such tremendous changes are not seen in the ways software are being built and delivered so many questions arises over here like uh, why does a software need longer time to finish right 
then why are software development costs so high then we uh, we have questions like like why finding errors before delivering software to customers is still impossible then why maintenance of existing software requires so much time and cost why uh, we face difficulty in measuring software development and maintenance so uh, we have these questions have led to adoption of uh, software engineering uh, practices right now let's see types of uh, software so information content and information determinacy determine type of software applications like uh, system software then uh, we have application software as you can see on your screen then we have engineering scientific software and we have also embedded software then product line software then we have web applications uh, related softwares then we have artificial intelligence related softwares we have net sourcing then we have open source software so these uh, all are the types of software then at last we have the new economic software then system software so let's start uh, with uh, describing this all the software so first one is system software so these are the programs that service uh, other programs such as operating system some operating systems process complex and determinate information whereas some operating system uh, process indeterminate data so the characteristics of such operating systems are uh, heavy interaction with hardware multiple user concurrent operations that require scheduling then we have resource sharing process management then complex data structure and multiple external interface then second one is application software so these are standalone programs that solve a specific business needs such uh, applications facilitate uh, business operations and decision making some software are also used to control real time business function for example point of sale transaction processing then uh, real time manufacturing etc then the third one is engineering scientific software so this software can be characterized as a number crunching algorithm which range from astronomy to volcanology from molecular biology to automated manufacturing so some examples of uh, these softwares are computer assisted designing cad cad weather forecasting systems etc then we have a next software uh, related uh, with embedded uh, software right so in embedded software these software reside within a product or system they are used to implement control features for end users they generally have limited functions then we have product line software such software provide specific capability for use by many different customers this software address uh, mass uh, consumer markets for example word processor then uh, spreadsheet etc then we have web applications these are wide range of applications stored as set of linked hypertext files nowadays uh, web apps give sophisticated computation by integrating corporate databases and business applications then we have artificial intelligence software this software uses non numeric algorithms to solve complex pro uh, problems that uh, actually that problems cannot be solved by computation actually so applications include uh, robotics expert system then artificial neural network etc then uh, ubiquity is a uh, computing software uh, in which a rapid growth of wireless networking has led to uh, distributed computing actually they pose challenge to software engineers to develop such uh, systems that allow small devices and computers to uh, communicate across a vast network then we have net sourcing 
सो वर्ल्ड वाइड वेब हैज बिकम अ कंप्यूटिंग इंजिन इंजिन एंड कंटेंट प्रोवाइडर बोथ एक्चुअली सो देर इज अ नीड टू प्रोवाइड सिंपल एंड सोफिस्टिकेटेड एप्लीकेशन बेनिफिट टारगेटेड एंड यूजर्स वर्ल्ड वाइड देन वी हैव ओपन सोर्स सॉफ्टवेयर सो अ पॉलिसी ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ सोर्स कोड फॉर सिस्टम एप्लीकेशन टू कस्टमर्स हैज मेड सोर्स कोड अवेलेबल फॉर लोकल मोडिफिकेशन नाव डेज so software developers need to build self descriptive source code along with techniques that allow users to know what changes have been made to the software then we have the new economy software uh, and in the new economy software the dot com economy lead to new applications that uh, facilitate mass communication and mass product distribution so in the next uh, slide we will see software engineering a layered technology so here according to fries boyer software engineering is establishment and use of sound engineering principles in order to obtain economical software that is reliable and works uh, efficiently on real machine according to i triple e developed a more comprehensive definition which is like software engineering is the application of a systematic disciplined and quantifiable approach to the development operation and maintenance of software for example the application of engineering uh, to software and the study uh, of approaches as in software engineering is a layered approach so in the next uh, slide uh, we can see the four layers of software engineering where layer 1 is tools so the first layer involves choosing the semi automated and automated tools that will become the framework for the project some examples may include uh, like choosing microsoft publisher for web design then we we can say using selenium for testing across uh, platforms then the third one is uh, using an integrated development environment for building applications then layer 2 is method so the second layer establishes the methods of developing software this includes any technical knowledge and resources required for development some task include choosing method for uh, communication analysis modeling then program construction and testing and we can say support also then in the layer 3 process layer 3 focuses on the framework that needs to be established to deliver software effectively this layer can be broken into five sub layers like uh, communication let's define various facts of communication are needed at this point and in fact they are critical to success first communication with the client is required to understand needs demands criteria and parameters of the project team communication uh, disseminates uh, this knowledge so that uh, everyone is on the same page ongoing communication prevents uh, actually misunderstanding and wasted manners then we have planning so this sub layer involves making a map or blueprint to break down the process of development and document goals milestones and uh, plans then we have modeling for this part of the process developers create a model actually developers create a model so the client can visualize the finished product then we have construction so these sub layers refers to the actual coding and testing of the product then we have deployment so this differs from modeling rather than just providing the client with a model the team delivers an actual version of the software for testing evaluation and feedback 
then layer 4 a quality focus at this point the software is developed and uh, ref uh, refined to a point but it is critical to apply quality control to the finished product besides testing the end product to ensure that it meets the client's specification it also needs real world testing to determine how efficient usable and reusable it will be and it needs to explore how many resource uh, maintenance will require actually so if it is uh, replacing an older software or platform quality control will ensure the new software will meet the needs uh, we have uh, some questions like why use the layered approach then the answer will be laying out the tools methods and processes from the start of the software engineering process and then uh, actually communicating these uh, decisions to the development team allows client project manager and team members to uh, periodically test the quality and uh, usability of the end product right so the layered approach allows a team to deliver even complex software on budget and on time now the uh, second question may be like benefits uh, what are the benefits of software engineering as a layered technology so the answer uh, can be like this since software demands are getting more complex the layered approach offers some important advantages and benefits so those advantages uh, can be better decision making actually that's defined so the decisions outlined in each layer provide a structure for the whole project so unifying collaboration and problem solving then a uh, second advantage can be early error detection so the layered approach uh, lends itself to identifying and solving errors early in the project then we have ease of uh, configuration and maintenance so the helpful feedback timely testing and constant communication help to make uh, the end project easy to configure and maintain then in the uh, next slide we have process framework right so software process uh, to build any product a series of predictable steps a roadmap are design right so it is called a process same applies to software software process helps achieve timely high quality result it consists of a framework for tasks that are required to build high quality software so a process framework creates the foundation for software process it begins with identifying framework activities so these activities are applicable to all software projects right so the framework also encompasses a set of umbrella activities that are applicable across entire software process each uh, framework activity consists of a number of software engineering tasks accomplishes some part of the software so in the next slide we have a uh, majority of software uh, follow a uh, generic process framework consisting of communication planning modeling construction and deployment right so in the communication phase uh, actually it refers to communication and collaboration with a uh, customer for requirement gathering right and the planning actually so these uh, activity refers to software engineering work plan to be followed actually it deals with uh, technical tasks schedule resources risk uh, associated with software then work products to be produced etc then in the modeling actually it consists of analysis and design analysis creates analysis model then design models is uh, created from analysis model design model enables developer and customer to understand software requirements and if design will achieve it then construction refers to code generation and testing either manually or automated then we have deployment 
completed software is delivered to customer who then evaluate it and provide feedback so these uh, five framework activities are applicable uh, for the development of a small project or a large and uh, complex computer based systems alike then in the next slide we have uh, umbrella activities so on your screen you can see umbrella activities all framework activities are surrounded by umbrella activities umbrella activities are applied throughout software project if applied systematically these activities ensure uh, successful completion of project so in this activities we have tracking and control then we have technical reviews we have uh, quality assurance then uh, you can see on your screen configuration management then we will have documentation then uh, reusability then measurement and matrix then uh, risk management you can see a diagram also on your screen so uh, now let's define each activity in brief uh, so we will start with tracking and uh, control so the developing team uh, accesses project plan against predefined schedule right so if they uh, find that the project is not going according to predefined schedule then necessary actions are taken to maintain the schedule then uh, we have technical reviews actually the aim of technical reviews are to detect quality problems and suggest improvements right so the technical person focuses on the quality of the software from the customer point of view then we have quality assurance in the quality assurance is conducted a uh, assess software quality for example during the software development uh, meetings are conducted at every stage of the development actually to find out the defects and suggest improvements to produce good quality uh, good quality products or software then we have con configuration management so this activity manages uh, the effect of changes throughout the software process then we have documentation so these activities that are that are needed to create the documents forms lists logs and user manuals for the software being developed then uh, we have reusability so here this activity defines the specification for reuse of the products it also set up a mechanism by which a uh, reusable components are developed and used then we have measurement and matrix so software can be measured directly or indirectly direct measures are line of code cost etc then indirect measures are quality functionality etc this activity defines how software can be measured and using which matrix it also help uh, develop uh, new matrix for developers then uh, we have risk management risk is an event that may or may not occur so many risk are associated with any project right this activity uh, assesses if risk may occur and if they occur how it will affect project so in the next slide uh, we have capability uh, maturity model so the capability maturity model integration or cmmi is a process model that provides a clear definition of what an organization should do uh, should do to uh, promote behaviors that lead to improved performance right so with uh, five maturity levels the cmmi defines the most important elements that are required to uh, build great products or deliver great services and wraps them all up uh, actually in a uh, comprehensive model we can say now cmm uh, examples uh, can be people cmm uh, uh, let's define develop uh, in the people cmm develop motivate and uh, retain project uh, talent can be considered 
then in the software cmm uh, enhance a uh, software focused uh, development and maintenance capability can be considered now in the next slide uh, we have maturity level 1 which is performed right at this level processes are usually ad hoc and chaotic the organization usually does not provide a uh, stable environment and uh, do not use any proven uh, processes right such organizations uh, often produce products and uh, services that work however they frequently exceed the budget and schedule of their project then characteristics of such organization are a tendency to overcommit then abandon uh, processes in the time of crisis and not be able to repeat their past successes then in the maturity level 2 we have managed so at this level an organization has achieved all the specific and generic goals of the maturity level uh, actually maturity level 2 process areas then uh, projects are performed and managed according to their uh, documented plans then organization ensure that project requirements are managed and that uh, processes and work products are planned performed measured and controlled then uh, work products are reviewed with stakeholders also in the maturity level 3 defined at this level processes are well characterized and understood and are described in standard procedures tools and methods at maturity level 3 the standards process description and uh, procedures for a project are tailored from the organization's set of standard processes to suit a particular uh, project or organization unit now the organization's set of standard processes include the processes uh, addressed at maturity level 2 and uh, maturity level 3 so as a result the processes that are performed across the organization are consistent except for the differences allowed by the tailoring guidelines processes are managed more proactively using an understanding of the interrelationships of the process activities and detailed measures of the processes so actually it works products and its services uh, at the maturity level 4 which is quantitatively managed so at uh, maturity level 4 sub processes are selected that significantly contribute to overall process performance these selected uh, sub, uh, sub processes are controlled using statistical and other qualitative techniques so qualitative uh, objectives for quality and process performance are established and uh, uh, we can say used as criteria in managing uh, processes actually so quantitative objectives are based on the needs of the customer and user organization and process uh, implementers actually so quality and uh, process performance are understood in statistical terms and are managed throughout the life of the uh, actually processes for the processes uh, detailed measures of processes uh, performance are collected and statistically analyzed quality and uh, process performance measures are incorporated into the organization's measurement repository to uh, support fact based decision making in the future then uh, maturity level 5 which is optimizing so at this level processes are continually uh, improved based on a quantitative understanding of the common causes of variation inherent in processes so focus is on continually improving process performance through both uh, uh, we can say uh, incremental and innovative technological improvements right so through quantitative process improvements changing business objectives are revised 
then improvements in processes are measured and evaluated accord, uh, against the quantitative process improvement objectives. Then optimizing uh, processes that are agile and innovative depends on the participation of an empowered uh, workforce aligned with the business values and objectives of the organization. The organization's ability to rapidly respond to changes and opportunities is enhanced by finding ways to accelerate and share learnings. Improvements of the processes is inherently a part of everybody's role, right? Resulting in a cycle of continual improvement. So, each maturity level provides a necessary foundation for e effective impl implementation of the processes at next level. So, higher level processes have less chance of success without the discipline provided by lower levels. Now, the CMMI defines each process area in terms of specific goals and specific practices required uh, to achieve these goals right now uh, to achieve a maturity level the specific goals and associated practices must be achieved in the next slide you uh, you can see the table of cmmi levels with process areas and result here you can see uh, different levels like level 5 optimizing where focus is on continuous process improvement, then process area is uh, organizational innovation and deployment, then continuous analysis and improvement and the result uh, can be highest quality and low risk. So, the same in the level 4 which is quantitatively managed, you can see in the focus column quantitatively managed and in the process area column organizational process performance quantitative uh, project management and in the result column you can see higher quality or uh, lower risk for the level 3 defined you can see in the co uh, focus column standardization of process and the process area can be requirements development technical solution product integration verification validation organizational uh, process focus, organizational process definition, organizational training, integrated project management, risk management, decision analysis and resolution. And in the result column, you can see medium quality, medium risk. In the next slide, we have a uh, level 2 managed. In the next column, you can see a uh, focus column, basic project management. Then uh, we have uh, requirements management, project planning, project monitoring con and control, supplier agreement management, measurement and analysis, then process and product uh, quality assurance. Then at last we have configuration management and in the result column you can see low quality or high risk. Then for level 1 which is performed. Uh, in the focus column, we can see process is ad hoc and informal. Then in the result column, we can uh, see lowest quality or highest risk. So, after completion of each and every topic, uh, my dear students, let us sum up uh, this unit. So, actually software is the key element in any computer based systems. Over past 60-70 years, software has evolved, yet we still have trouble developing high quality software. The intent of software engineering is to provide a framework for building higher quality software. Software engineering is a discipline that integrates process, uh, methods and tools for development of computer software. So, whatever the size and complexity of a project, all must undergo a definite process. Each process has a defined set of framework activities, right? So, each framework activity is covered by a set of umbrella activities that span entire process. 
So the capability maturity model integration is a model that describes specific goals, practices and capabilities that should be present in mature software process. So this is all about unit 1 my dear students. We will meet for unit 2 of software engineering. So till then have a great day. Yeah, yeah, but I'm on